Welcome to today's episode of the Reclaim Boundary series. It's on the different types of manipulation. That's what today's episode is on. Let me invite a few people. All right. All right, let's talk about, let's start with gaslighting, right? Including reverse victimhood. Denying your experience make you think you are delusional. That's the more well-known one, right? And it comes from the, I think, 1944 or 1942 film, uh, Gaslight, in which the husband was trying to uh, drive the wife crazy, uh, literally make her think that she's going insane by first isolating her from other people and he would do weird things like uh, slowly, you know, turn off the, dim the the lamp, the gas lamp, you know, uh, turn it off and on or, or dim it. And, and then when the wife asked, hey, why, why did you turn it off? He'd be like, no, it didn't get turned off. You know, literally denying what happened, denying the reality of what happened. Uh, and it turns out he was trying to uh, get there some inheritance in the attic, uh, something along those lines, and literally trying to uh, drive her insane so that he could put her in the lunatic asylum. Like, literally, that's what the show, uh, that was the intent of gaslighting. And, and that is the intent behind gas, racialized gaslighting as well, as well as spiritual gaslighting, where uh, you either have two choices, either submit to the oppression or be driven insane by the constant denials to the point that you start questioning your own insanity. That's how white people would do something racist and say oh, that's not racist, or ask you to justify it and be like, oh, how is that racist? This is why I literally call it a white proverb, you know, the term, how is that racist, is a white proverb, because it's not our responsibility to keep proving to them that something is racist, or that we live in a racist system. That's a sea lining, which goes hand in hand with white intellectualization and white uh, interrogation, uh, two of the weapons of whiteness uh, in Catrice Jackson's book, Weapons of Whiteness. Also in her book, The Becky Code, one of the chapters. Uh, hi, AJ Ward artist. So we're talking about the different types of manipulation as is described, gaslighting. Oh, under gaslighting, there's also reverse victimhood where someone will do something cruel to you, will bully you, and then pretend that they're the victim and that you're the bully. This is how cops, uh, a cop will shoot a black man, an unarmed black man running away from them or literally on the ground with their arms raised up or shoot them and say that he was scared and that that's why he shot. Again, pretending that they're the victim and that the, the victim is the bully. That's reverse victimhood. They did the same thing to my ancestors. They are... Uh, criminalized 10 million of my people uh, as thugs uh, just because they were defending their land and uh, they killed all of them, including newborn babies. And it's still being done. And that's why I consider the word thug and savage to be a racist slur against my people. Uh, I personally do not use it, use that term anymore except within the context of only talking about my oppression or the oppression of my people. So next is sea lining. Sea lining is constantly exhausting you with repeated questions. An example that I just gave is the question, how is that racist? It's a form of sea lining. Or how is that cultural appropriation? Prove it to me that this is cultural appropriation. That's sea lining. 
especially when they don't actually want the answer. They don't care about the answer. The point is a war of attrition, try to exhaust you mentally and intellectually with repeated questions. They do not care about the answer. And that's why it's, I say it's not your responsibility as a racialized or a colonized person to answer these questions ever. Next is lampshading. Lampshading is often used in comedy. In a more benign way, you might see in kids' cartoons like, uh, like SpongeBob, uh, where there's literally a fire underwater, which doesn't make sense logically. So the writers know this and they want you to know that they know this. And so they point it out in the show itself. So now the character in the show will ask, hey, you know, how is there a you know, how is this happening underwater? How is there a, in before the character can complete the sentence and say fire, the fire just uh, disappears. Uh, there's another kid's cartoon where, you know, kids are doing adult things and adult is asking, how can a kid do this? But in more uh, harmful ways, it's used to... Uh, aid and abet and be openly racist or sexist without any accountability. What usually happens again is uh, a character will say a racist or sexist or ableist joke and another character will point it out and be like, he's saying something like, hey, that's racist or that's sexist. But the, the person who made the original joke will not be held accountable. It, they would they, the show would literally cut away to another scene or the conversation would move to another subject. Uh, there might even be a laugh track after that statement that's racist as if the statement that's racist itself is a joke. Uh, so there's no accountability. It's acknowledgement without accountability. Moving on quietly, that's lampshading. Again, it's more about proving how smart they are or uh, in more recent terms, how woke they are without actually uh, any actual accountability or responsibility at all. The next one is using confirmation bias. This is how they pretend that the law of attraction, for example, is real. Uh, if you want to see if the consequences of a world or a universe where the law of attraction might actually be real, is to watch Wonder Woman 1984. I highly recommend it. It's also a great example of what happens when you give up your humanity for power, which is literally what uh, non-racialized people, European colonizers, white people have done for the last thousand years. It, it might be 400 years in the United States, but it's a thousand years for us Hindus. And so confirmation bias is actually the bias that uh, if you think of something, you start seeing it everywhere. If you think of buying a red car, you see red cars everywhere. This does not mean that it's a sign from the universe to, to actually buy a red car. This does not mean that you manifested that. It is just confirmation bias. So confirmation bias is to use to manipulate you into assuming that law, the law of attraction is real. The last one is survivorship bias. Survival of bias is, is when a survivor tries to teach you about how to succeed, for example, even though they're actually the exception to the rule. So without acknowledging the way systems of oppression helps some but not others. The thing is that thing that they did worked for them because they're the survivor, you see. Especially when you add, again, a racialization into the mix. By the way, there's a reason why I no longer use the term black or brown uh, people or people of color. Uh, because it ignores the fact that it ignores race to say it, frankly. Yeah, it's how, you know, <clears throat> white people end up uh, pretending that they can experience racism too when... And this is why I only use the term racialized people or racialized person or colonized people. Uh, I've been using that for quite a, quite a while now. The original term is visibly racialized people, invented by Alejandra Guzman and Diana Sunshine. 
And I've kind of modified that by just saying racialized people or colonized people, because there is a difference between, uh, although there are overlaps, there is a difference between a racialized person and a colonized person. And I no longer use the term white people. I use the term uh, colonizers or non-racialized people is what I use uh, to distinguish the fact that white people are not racialized and therefore do not experience racism at all, ever. Not to, you know, it's that simple. I'm not even going to get into the fact that they, they hold the systemic power to actually act on their prejudice or the fact that they're the ones who invented race and racism and therefore they cannot experience racism for that reason as well. The term racialized versus non-racialized people just keeps it simple. And so if a non-racialized person tells you uh, how they succeeded or ended up with lots of money and be rich, they're ignoring the fact that they have racial capital. Uh, also known as white privilege. Again, I no longer use the term white privilege because then they pretend that uh, they don't have privilege of because they were they grew up poor or whatever, but they still had racial capital. Two people with the same amount of money or the same upbringing, one who is racialized and one who is non-racialized, uh, the other person can still, the non-racialized person can still have an advantage over the racialized person just because the non-racialized person has racial capital. That capital acts as extra capital that amounts to real money. That's the equivalent of actual currency capital because there are literally places in the world where uh, a non-racialized person can uh, can make five or six figures a year just by sitting in the room and being a, a white man in a suit, for example. Yeah. You accept that. That's it. So to recap, the different types of manipulation are gaslighting, including reverse victimhood, denying your experience, make you think you are delusional, and reverse victimhood is bullying you and then pretending they're the victim while you're the bully. Uh, especially when they call you angry for calling out their racism or colonialism, or, or tone policing you by saying you're not being kind enough, etc. Sea lining, exhausting you with repeated questions without caring about the answers, lampshading, acknowledge without accountability, we call moving on quietly, then using confirmation bias. If you think of buying a red car, you see red cars everywhere. Finally, using survivorship bias without acknowledging the way system of oppression helps some but not others. Now, this is not exhaustive. Uh, it's just some of them. So let me tell you about the program, the paid program that I'll be you'll be joining. Uh, I'm taking about five or six people. It's a group program. It's going to be uh, three group sessions uh, plus one intro orientation group session. So there'll be orientation, then the three group sessions, and it will go through the three topics that I've gone through in the last three days, starting with the good, evil, false binary, then the seven types of unrecognized labor to reclaim your value, then the types of manipulation. And then finally, there is an integration call that's one-on-one -on -one, uh, that you can receive for about two weeks to a month after the final group call. I highly recommend waiting a month so that you really integrate, that you have time to think about it and really ask me uh, the right questions on a one-on-one -on -one -on -one basis. So yeah, I will be uh, launching that very soon. So be sure to uh, DM me about this. Uh, it is a paid program. So let me know. Uh, I might have scholarships as well for racialized people. In fact, actually, this is only for racialized people. And if you are not racialized, I highly recommend uh, you provide a scholarship. Or even if you are racialized, but you don't feel the need to attend, but you want to support another person uh, in attending, uh, please uh, contact me about uh, donating a scholarship towards it. Uh, my birthday is coming up on June 3rd, so... Uh, 
Yeah, I highly recommend that you reach out to me. It will be a wonderful birthday gift if you can provide uh, a full scholarship for even one person or maybe even all six people that I want to take into this program. All right, peace and love. Uh, and also, you know, my country is going through a lot of stuff, including my parents right now in the middle of a military coup and all that. So, yeah, it will be highly helpful for me as well if you can support in any way you can. All right, peace and love.